So you found a book, article, or other source to use. You must cite this source to give proper credit to the author and to ensure that the source can be found both by your instructor and by you in the future. We're gonna look at one method for citing sources using a citation manager called Zotero and Chicago citation style. This method has four steps. One, collect a source using Zotero. Step two, correct the imported information. Step three, cite the source using that information. And four, correct that citation using the Chicago Manual of Style. So collect, correct, cite, and correct again. Step one is to collect a source using Zotero. We're going to use the ebook Critical Skills for Environment Professionals. If you haven't used Zotero before and you need help getting started or just want to learn more, you can watch the Zotero at UNCG overview video or go to the UNCG library's Zotero guide. I've installed Zotero and the Zotero connector for Firefox. I found the book in the library catalog at UNC Greensboro University Libraries and I'm ready to add it to my Zotero library. So there are four ways to get information about this ebook into Zotero. So step one, or method number one, is I could use the Zotero connector for Chrome or Firefox to import the information from a web page, for example, this library catalog. It's a little bit buggy sometimes with the library catalog, otherwise known as WorldCat. It'll sometimes say UNCG subscription login um, instead of the title of the book or the article. Um, especially if you are in a search result page trying to save a resource. Um, you can also use the ebook access page um, by clicking on view ebook. This will take you usually to the publisher's page for a book. Um, so we are looking at the database EBSCO host or EBSCO. Um, and this is where we can access the full text of this book or download it as a PDF. Um, so this has information about the book, including the publisher, what type of resource it is, the title, whether if it's in a series or not, and then authors and other information. Um, sometimes it has an ISBN, um, which is a standard book number, um, or even a DOI for an article, for example. So I can use Zotero Connector to save something here. And you can also tag things as well. So I'm going to tag this one as ebook access page. And I'm going to go back to the library catalog and tag this one really quickly as library catalog so we can see how these are different in um, Zotero now that we've added them. You can also save information about this book um, to Zotero from the ebook itself in an ebook reader. So for example, if I click on PDF full text for EBSCO, it will direct me to log in if I haven't logged in already. Um, and then it will take me to the actual ebook where I can read this book. So I will save this one as ebook reader. So I've got three different sources for information from this book saved to Zotero. So this is one way you can get information from Zotero added. So again, that's using the Zotero connector tool here. When you're in Zotero, you can also use the add items by identifier tool um, to import information from uh, using an ISBN, a direct object identifier or DOI, or some other identifier. So this is this little magic wand icon um, where you can enter an ISBN, a DOI, and then some other uh, possible identifiers for an article or a book or other source. So if I go back to the library catalog, for this book and scroll down, I can usually find the ISBN and I can copy it. And either of these will usually work. Um, I usually go for the first one in the page. There is a DOI for this one as well. So I could also use the DOI. And then I go back to Zotero, click on this enter object by identifier button. And then I'm just gonna paste that ISBN in here and hit the enter key. And we'll see a little loading bar and it has added this resource. Um, so I'm going to tag this one with, nope, with add items by identifier, just again, so I know which ones I've added uh, from which source. And you'll notice there's some information that is different depending on where I've saved this book from. Um, and we'll talk about 
why that's significant and why that's important for you in order to cite this book um, a little bit later. So we've used the Zotero connector to import these three from various websites or so web pages. I've used this um, import item by uh, uh, identifier tool. You can also click and drag a downloaded PDF um, into your library, into your Zotero library, um, to import the information embedded in the PDF. Zotero will automatically add source information about the book that is in the PDF, um, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, so I'm going to open up my file explorer because I am on Windows, but this should work on Mac or Apple computers as well. Um, so I have this PDF saved, which I've downloaded from the library catalog or from that ebook reader as a PDF, and I can click and drag it in and it will add this PDF to my library. Um, so here it has added it as a PDF and sometimes it pulls out that information and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so if it ever doesn't automatically add the information, you can right click and then click on retrieve metadata for PDF. And it will do its best to search the text and figure out what this is from and it will search for the information. If it doesn't find the information using your PDF, for example, if you can't highlight text in your PDF, Zotero won't be able to find out what this PDF is, what book it is. Um, you can right click on your PDF um, and there is usually a button that says uh, create parent item. So let me re-add this PDF so I can show you. Create parent item and then you can use an ISBN or a DOI like I did before. I could paste in the ISBN or you can manually enter um, information about it. So it will give you this information to the right. I could select that this is a book or I don't believe they have ebook as an option. So I can just select that this is a book. I can give it the actual book title and other information and do this manually. Um, but there's a lot of other ways to get this in here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this item by moving it to the trash. And then I want to tag this one because we added it from a PDF. So when you tag things, it basically makes it easier to search for things here. So if I search for PDF, it searches anywhere in the current folder that I am in um, for tags that have the word PDF. Um, it can also search for titles or authors and things like that. So if you have a specific class, you can tag something with, for example, EVS or sorry, GES um, 631 um, or 136. And it will pop up when you search for that course in this uh, list. Or you could also make a folder for each course. And then the final fourth way to add something. So we've added things using the Zotero connector from websites. We've added something using an identifier like an ISBN or a DOI. We've added something by clicking and dragging a downloaded PDF into Zotero. And we can also manually add things as well. So by clicking on uh, the new item button, which is a plus symbol, um, you can click on book and it will add a blank book where we can manually type in the title, author, and all of this other information. Um, in order to do this, usually what I do is I take Zotero and I, on Windows, drag it to one side of the screen, which then gives me um, a window pop-up option where I can put the ebook the e on the other side, or I could even put the catalog, the library catalog page for the book on this side too, because a lot of the information that I need is going to be on this page. Um, but usually I prefer to open up the actual textbook or book that we're looking at so that I can then type in this information. So critical skills for environmental professionals, putting knowledge into practice. And you'll notice that sometimes the capitalization is a little bit different. So I have not capitalized into, they have it capitalized here. Um, that just depends on what citation style you're using and whether they capitalize into or not and different words like that. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and capitalize it since it's capitalized on this ebook. You'll notice down here, it's not capitalized. Um, so we could do either really. And then another thing you might notice is there is no colon here separating these two, the title and the subtitle, but the text up here does have, and the ones that we imported also have a colon. So this uh, is basically what we do to separate a title from a subtitle. And in the library catalog, in this kind of uh, ebook reader view, 
it puts a space between the colon and the title, but we want to get rid of that space um, and make it actually grammatically correct. So we want that colon to be right up against the title. So this is just a quirk of library catalogs sometimes. So whenever you import information about a book or an article into Zotero, you want to double check for that space um, if there is a colon and a subtitle involved. And you want to also double check that things are capitalized correctly. Um, if you import a book and it puts everything in lowercase, for example, you can right click on this and then select title versus sentence case. So if you want everything to be lowercase, you can do that. If you want it to be title case, which is how Chicago style recommends you do it, um, you can right click and select title case. So I'm going to leave it on title case. And for author and the rest of this information, I'm not going to fill that in. Um, if you need a little bit more help with that, again, you can check out the library Zotero tutorial um, or our Zotero libguide. And Zotero also has a lot of support and documentation on how to do stuff too. Um, all right. So we've imported information into Zotero from a variety of methods, from four different methods. Um, and they're all a little bit different. So they all have different creators or different titles maybe a different type of thing. So these are all books. This one is being saved as a web page instead of a book. And you can also see that here. Um, it might have a different publishing date or is missing a different publishing date. And there's other information that is missing too. So for example, author is missing for some of these. Um, and various information is just different. So which one do we use, right? So none of these are 100% correct. Um, and this is where the second step in our citation method comes in handy. So step two is to correct the information in Zotero. So Zotero is pretty smart. It's a very helpful tool, but it's not the smartest. It can be pretty dumb sometimes. Um, it only collects the information that is available to it from wherever you imported this material. And people make the information that you import. And people can make errors and mistakes. So none of this information is ever perfect. So you'll see this space with the colon. Sometimes this second word um, is lowercase instead of capitalized. Um, so it's up to you to correct this information so that when you go to export your citation, it is correct. So there's also a lot of extra stuff in here that we don't need. Um, for example, this number of volumes, one online resource, illustrations, color maps. This information is usually imported from the library catalog or the publisher's page for a book. Um, and then sometimes there's also series, which we don't always have to cite. Um, so a lot of this information, if it's in here, Zotero will export it with your citation. Um, so if you don't need it, you can delete it from this resource. And if you ever want to keep that information, you could put it into the notes, or you could duplicate an item, remove one um, version, remove this from one version, and then you can also tag it with a related resource so that these two books are linked. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this item to the trash because we don't need it. All right, so let's see what information we'll need to build our citation in Chicago style. Um, so I'm going to go to the library's citation guide. So each uh, common, each of one of the common citation styles, so uh, APA, Chicago style, um, I want to say there's like AMA, um, there's a lot of different citation styles. So the UNCG libraries have a guide for each um, of these styles, and it will be at uncg.libguides.com um, citation slash citation. And I'm going to hit enter. And you'll see there's APA, MLA, Chicago style, which is what we're using, um, Turabian, which is a kind of another version of Chicago, um, but with some differences. And then there's a couple of other uh, older versions of these styles here too, and some other less common ones. Um, so these are usually on the course guide or um, subject guide for your program. So for example, um, for geography, there is a geography guide. So uncg.libguides.com slash GES. And there is also one for environment and sustainability, which is going to be uncg.libguides.com slash EVS, um, which is the one I'll go to because this is these are probably going to be a little bit more relevant for the folks who are watching this video. So most of these uh, course guides or these subject guides are available on Canvas. So when you are in your Canvas course, if you go down to the library resources tab, um, it will show you this page or this website. And each of these tags has different or tabs has different information. Um, so this one has that Zotero for citation management guide that I mentioned. And here is our citing sources in Chicago style guide. So this links to the same page as this citation style. 
um, maybe with one or two differences, um, but for the most part, they are the same page. So either of these pages will work, be it the EDS or GES subject guide or the Chicago citation guide. So I'm gonna leave the Chicago citation style uh, guide up. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to open this up and drag it to one side of my screen and then keep Zotero in the other side here. Um, and I wanna be able to see the information about the book and this center uh, tab isn't quite as important. So I wanna make sure I can really see everything I need to see here. So you can adjust your windows as you need to. If you're on a laptop, this can be a lot more difficult. Um, so just keep in mind that you might be going back and forth between the windows. Um, All righty. So the first thing you'll notice, let me make this big screen real quick while I explain this guide. The first thing you'll notice about the Chicago style guide is that it is split up into two systems. So on the left, you'll see notes and bibliography, which is the style that is commonly used in the humanities, the arts and humanities. And then there's the author date style, which is used commonly in the sciences. So you will likely be using uh, the author date style if you are in geography, environment, sustainability, or in the environment sustainability program. Um, sociology and social sciences also typically commonly, commonly use author date. So they are included here in sciences. Um, if you're not sure which one you use, ask your instructor, they can tell you which one they want you to use. All right, so if I scroll down here, so at the very top, you'll see kind of an introduction. It takes you how to get to uh, uh, the tutorial for using Chicago Citation Style, which if you haven't taken it yet, it will be very helpful for you. There is a link to the actual Chicago Manual of Style online, which we will look at during our fourth correct uh, uh, step in our method. And then there's also um, things like a quick guide, and then other uh, formatting tips and sheets and sample um, papers as well, which are really helpful if you're writing a paper or for an assignment. So we want to look at examples of books. So I could click on books here in the table of contents, or I can just scroll down to where it says books in Chicago author date. And it has information about how I cite books. So what information I need, and here are some examples as well. So I can see from these examples in this book, that I need the author's first name and last name, and it is last name first, first name second. For the first author, I can see down here, if there's a second or third author or more, um, I would start with their first name first and then their last name. Um, but this first author is also always gonna have last name first, first name second. Um, I also need the publication year, and this is where we can tell why it is called author date. So the author information comes first, and then there's a date. And this is the same for the in-text citation too. So when you're writing and citing your sources in the text of your paper, um, you want author date. Um, then you can also add page numbers, for example, in these examples. And you might also notice too that we have an ebook example here too. So this particular source that we're looking at, this critical skills book, um, is an ebook. It's an example of an ebook. Our library catalog page for it tells us it's an ebook. Sometimes you'll see a scanned page of a print book we would still cite the scanned page of a print book as a print book, even if we read a scanned PDF of it. Um, ebooks are specifically published as ebooks and they might have different information. Um, so basically the only difference between an ebook and a print book is that we can include the URL for our ebook or the library database where you accessed it. And I'll show you how we can get to that information um, later. So back to what information we need. We have the names of the authors or authors, the year. We need the title of our book or our resource. So for journal articles, we would start with the journal, um, the article title, and then we would move on to the journal title. So there's other information we might need. So you could scroll up and get that. But for books, we want the book title and we're gonna put that in italics and it's gonna be in what is called title case where almost everything is capitalized except for kind of the smaller words, things like um, prepositions, from, to, in, um, and everything else will be capitalized. After that, we want information about the publisher, so the publication details of this book. So we have the publishing location. So this was published in New York, and usually that's assumed to be New York City. Um, usually you do the city level and Chicago does have different rules for city versus state versus country, which we can look at in uh, advanced uh, citation, but we're not really going to cover them today. If you have questions about those, you are welcome to um, ask us using the library chat or email your librarian. So we have the location where this book was published, 
And then we also have who published it. So for this example, Born a Crime um, from Trevor Noah, it's published by Spiegel and Grau. Um, down here, this one is published by Johns Hopkins University Press in Baltimore. Um, and usually this information is right in the front of the book. It's in the first five pages usually of an ebook right after the title. Um, sometimes there's a blank page in between the title and this information, um, but it's usually in the front of a book. Alrighty. And again, for ebooks, we also want to include a URL for the library database where we access the ebook. Um, all right. So now we're going to go back. We're going to make sure this information is correct in Zotero. So we want to make sure this is the, the second step of correcting the information in Zotero. Now that we know what information we need, um, we can go back. I'm going to put the book on the right side and Zotero on the left side. And I have the actual book that I read on here instead of the library catalog page. If you have a print book, it's recommended to have the print book in front of you to correct this. Um, so if you have to go back and check something out again, you can do that. But this is why we want to cite things as we are reading, um, because it makes it a lot easier for you later on when you are citing things. Then I have to keep going back to the book to see how to cite it. So because I have all these different versions of books, I'm just going to start with the one that I got from the library catalog. Um, as I scroll through them again, there are things that are different. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and default to the one from the library catalog because that's the one I usually read. All right. So I have the book on the right. I've got my Zotero listing on the left. First, I'm going to double check our title. So we have critical skills for environmental professionals. And here I've noticed everything's lowercase. So the first thing I want to do is make sure this is title case because Chicago style uses title case. Um, so critical skills for environmental professionals. My colon is OK. There's no space there. Putting knowledge into practice, that matches up. We are good there. Next thing is going to be authors. So I have Jennifer Pontius. And this one is um, last name first, first name second. Or if you're not sure, you can do a single field and just type in their full name. So Jennifer Pontius here, and that's spelled correctly. And Alan McIntosh um, is also in here as well. So next, I could scroll down. So here's the series name. Um, sometimes you'll see this on the copyright information, which I'm going to keep scrolling down. Here's our other page here. So here's our um, uh, copyright kind of block here where you can find the ISBN um, or ISSN for um, some resources, especially journals have ISSNs. So here I can find the series title again, which is the same as up there. So series, you'll notice it's a little bit different here. So if I want to cite this as having a series, I would retype this. And you can technically copy paste it, um, and it should be fine. Sometimes the formatting gets a little bit junked up when you copy paste things, though, so definitely double check. So Springer Textbook and Earth Sciences, Geography, and Environment. And well, I see Marty got left out, so I'm going to put that back in there. So now my series is in there, and it is exactly how it is in the book. So it doesn't have that extra information that was in there before. Um, if it has a series number or volume number, I could put that in here, but I'm not going to worry about that for this specific ebook um, because we have the title. I'm going to put the URL because it's an ebook. So, in theory, future me or another person will be able to find this without the series. Um, so, series, uh, usually people put series because sometimes folks who are citing a, an article um, who are looking at your sources want to see whether there are other things in that series or whether it's a part of a series because it can help them decide whether or not they want to read this book and whether it's relevant to them. Um, but it's not usually necessary to find the book. So this is kind of usually optional. Um, but again, you want to ask your instructor to make sure they don't want that information in there. Um, it's OK to have too much information, but you want to make sure you have as much information as you can so that someone can find this. So we've got title, author, series, which again is extra. Next, I want the publication year. I'm going to want the publisher and publisher location, and then I want the URL or database for eBooks. I don't need this information. So this information, again, is from the library catalog page. It basically tells librarians what to expect. So we're looking at an online resource with 188 pages, and then I want to say that's 15 front pages, like table of contents. It's got illustrations that are in color. So this is information that we do not have to include in our citation. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And again, if you want to keep that information, you can make a copy of this. So right click it and duplicate. And then you can keep it in one listing um, or again, paste it into the notes. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete it. 
So I am on my copyright page here. And let me double check real quick. what I have. So the next uh, bit of information that I have that I want to look for is that publisher information. Um, so publication year, publisher, and publisher location. So usually you, when you see this copyright symbol, that gives you the publishing information. Um, so I can see 2020 is our year, which was correctly identified in here. For ebooks and books, usually just the year is sufficient. For articles and journal articles, usually it's a little bit more specific with the month or the season, or even the specific date that something was published. Um, but year is fine for books. Um, we can see it was published by Springer Nature, technically Switzerland. Um, so Springer Nature is the one that published it. And you'll see this kind of just shortened to Springer. So this one is also a little bit uh, more of an advanced citation topic where it comes down to your instructor's individual preference. Um, so Springer Nature is what we call an imprint of uh, Springer. Um, so you can see that information kind of here on the um, page here. Let me zoom in a little bit because that's probably very tiny writing. Um, so it says this Springer imprint is published by blah, blah, blah. So I could put Springer, I could put Springer Nature Switzerland AG if I wanted to. I'm just going to leave it as Springer because that is sufficient for what we need. Um, if I search Springer, it will pop right up. Uh, another thing you can do to determine whether you want to do Springer or not is to look at the title page. Um, so both the cover of the book, and let me zoom out again so we can see the whole thing. So here we see it just says Springer, and then on this title page, it just says Springer. So I'm going to leave it as just Springer instead of doing the Springer nature thing. Um, we don't need number of pages in here. English we technically don't need, but this information won't be exported. So if it does, you can always erase it. ISBN won't be uh, exported, but we can erase it if it does. Short title is not really important for us, but the URL is. Um, and I also missed something. Let's go back real quick. So the publishing place. So CHAM is uh, cited down here in this publishing information. So it is published in CHAM, Switzerland. So when we get into the Chicago Style Manual in a later section, um, I will talk about how we determine whether we use cities versus countries. Again, that's another one of a little bit advanced. Usually the rule of thumb for Chicago style is if it is a city that is not commonly known. Um, so for example, ones that are commonly known would be Baltimore, New York City. Um, Portland is a little bit shakier because there are other Portlands, um, like Portland, Maine versus Portland, Oregon. But usually if you see Portland without a state, it's Portland, Oregon. Um, so the more commonly known cities, you don't have to put the state. Um, but if it's not a commonly known city, like Cham, for example, not a lot of folks in the United States know about that, you would do comma the country it's in. So Cham, comma Switzerland. And then if we change our mind, once we look at the Chicago style manual, we can go back and erase that information. But I'm going to put it here so that I can close this ebook and not have to worry about it. Um, so this step is usually the first step while I am reading the ebook. And then when we actually go back and look at the Chicago style manual, um, I don't have this page anymore and I don't want to open it again because that would be a pain in the butt. Um, I am citing, so I only want my paper and this uh, information up. So I usually leave this information. I leave as much information as possible that I know I'm going to need um, or might need. All right, so we have the title, the authors, a Springer, or the series, just in case we need it, the place, including the country, just in case we need it, the publisher, the date, um, all this other information will help us find it too, maybe, but it won't be in the citation. And then finally, URL, which I do need. So this URL is pretty messy. Um, as you scroll through, you'll see it's got a lot of like ampersands, it's got some equal signs, it's got the login symbol. So this usually happens because in order for us to access things on library database, databases, it needs us to log into our UNCG accounts. Um, so when you go to share the URL, it's got extra information in there so that EBSCO, this PDF website, um, or the publisher website knows that you are a student or someone affiliated with UNCG. But when you're going to cite, that's not going to be very helpful. So when you go to cite the book or the ebook, you want to look for things like DOIs. So this book does actually have an e a DOI. Some books don't. Um, since this one does, I'm going to go ahead and use that because that is one of the most helpful URLs. Usually they're semi-permanent. It's going to be more permanent than 
the URL with all the ampersands and question marks, um, or what we call a query URL. So a DOI is a little bit more permanent. It's a little bit more, um, it's called a direct object identifier. So if I copy paste this URL and put it into Google or Firefox, it will take me exactly to the ebook um, on the publisher's page. So I could cite it this way, and you'll notice it says by ebook because it's not affiliated with UNCG. It doesn't know that I'm affiliated with UNCG. Um, but this is what uh, somebody might need to actually find the exact version of this ebook that we need, that we read. For some ebooks, you might not have a DOI. Um, or it might not take you to the exact version of the book that you need. Um, usually if there's no DOI, what we can do is cite the library database that we got it from. So in one of our um, Chicago style on that libguide, there was an example that had the database instead of the URL. So to find that on the library catalog, and I'm gonna make this full screen so that we can see it. Um, when you scroll down, there is usually a access online button um, so it's kind of hidden right here. So usually there's more than one way to access an ebook or a resource. So you might see multiple links here. And when you click on view ebook, um, if there's multiple links, sometimes it will scroll you down to this section and you have to pick one. So this tells us that this is from the all EBSCO ebooks database, which I can just shorten to EBSCO ebooks. Um, sometimes these are named funky things, and this will come with practice if you're ever not sure what database it's from. This is something where you can go to the library reference chat and ask, hey, I need help figuring out what database this ebook is from. And they can tell you, you know, that if you're citing this, you should cite it as EBSCO ebooks or just EBSCO. So if I go back in here for URL, I could maybe also put EBSCO ebooks in my extra tab here so that I can paste it in easier. Or what you can also do is paste EBSCO ebooks in here. For example, if I didn't have a DOI, um, I could put EBSCO ebooks in the URL field and it will kind of cheat Zotero and put EBSCO ebooks where the URL should go, which is where it goes in the citation, which we'll see later. Um, but I want this to stay as the um, DOI. So I'm gonna copy that back. Copy link, because I want the full link. And this one has a dx.doi, so I'm going to make sure this works. Cool. All right. So always confirm that your URL works before you cite things. Um, so we have our information in Zotero. We have corrected it. So we've collected it. We've corrected it. And we've got it in Zotero. So now that we've got our, uh, our information about our book collected in Zotero, we've got it corrected using the original ebook that we looked at. Now we're going to cite the source using this information. Um, so we're going to create this citation for the ebook using Chicago author date. There are at least two ways to do this using Zotero. So we could manually write it. We could manually write out our citation like we did in high school maybe. Um, using the Chicago Manual of Style, or even a citation generator, so things like Son of Citation. Um, oh, sorry, two ways to do it. We can manually write it, or we can use a citation generator. Um, Zotero has a built-in citation generator, um, which lets you create a reference list or your bibliography, and citations that you can use in the text, so those parenthetical citations that you use up in your paper. Um, for all selected sources. So you can do this one source at a time. So create bibliography, and then I can output a citation or the entire list. I can select Chicago Manual of Style. And then there are a couple of different options. I usually select copy to clipboard and copy paste it in, um, or you can also save it as a file or print it or a bunch of different things. And then you can also select multiple resources and select create, and it will export all of them at once. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use this one that I already corrected. So I've collected it, I've corrected it. I'm going to create bibliography from item and I want to export it as a bibliography item. So I'm going to copy it to clipboard. I'm going to select OK. And then I'm going to pull this over here again. And I am going to open up a Google Doc, for example, or you could paste it into a Word document. 
um, a notepad file, anything. Um, and for those of you who just didn't catch what I just did, I did docs.new, um, which is a shortcut you can use to create a new Google Doc if you are logged in. So I'm going to use control V to paste this in. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that it saved the formatting correctly. Um, so sometimes when you copy paste things into Google Docs or Word, Microsoft Word or Notepad especially, um, sometimes it removes formatting like italics um, or like links, like URLs. This one saved it, so we're good. Um, so just at a quick glance, I see it saved the first name, it saved the second name of our person. We've got the year, we have our title here, there's no space in the colon, it's in italics, which I know is Chicago style, but we're going to cover that in a little bit. Um, and then we have our series, our publisher information, and our URL here. So it looks like everything has been saved, and we also have this kind of indent, which is what we want too. So our formatting is good to go. Um, we can double check that later though. So citation generators sometimes or often generate incorrect citations, and they have formatting errors. Um, all citation generators have this problem again, because unless you do that second correct step, it probably will pull in some errors from the metadata or the information about this book. Um, but even though they give us these errors, they give us something to start with so that I don't have to manually write this and spend hours trying to figure out exactly what we need and typing it out. So now I at least have a backbone or a foundation to start with that I can correct. So this can make it a lot quicker. Um, so there are also plugins for Google Docs and Microsoft Word that will automatically add and update citations for you. Um, the plugin in Google Docs is usually pretty buggy for me, so I'm going to click on it and see if it works. It looks like it did not. So usually it opens up behind. So usually when I open up this tab, there will be an add citation uh, uh, menu here, and I can add a citation, and it gives me a pop-up where I can type in the book that I want to add in the text. And then it will automatically add that book to my bibliography at the end of the page. Um, and again, Microsoft Word has this plugin too. When you install Zotero or the Zotero connector, it automatically installs these for you, um, which is pretty handy. Um, so if you do use these plugins, um, the automatic citations can be difficult to correct while you are actively writing your paper. So it can work best if you use the plugins to help manage your citations while you write. And then after you're done writing, when you're done with your kind of second or final draft, then you go back and correct all of your citations at the same time um, and unlink them from Zotero so that they're no longer automatic. Um, so that can help uh, with the editing process. So now that we've collected information about our ebook, we've corrected it in Zotero, we've exported it from Zotero into a Google Doc or our paper, now we're going to do our fourth step, which is correcting it again. So we have our second correct step. So now I don't need Zotero. I don't need the book, the ebook page. I've already done everything I need to do with those. Now I need my citation that I have generated. And I'm going to pull up the Chicago style guide, which we looked at earlier to figure out what we needed for our citation. So the final step is going to be correcting our citations. So I can use our examples here to get through uh, basically what we need. And you'll notice when I move this uh, Chicago style guide into half of a tab, it pulls it out instead of being two columns, it's uh, one column. So I do have to scroll a little bit to find exactly what I need. So books, Chicago author date. Um, you can also do like control F on a Windows computer. I think it's command F for a Mac, but don't quote me on that um, to find something in page. So I could say author date, book, or just search for book and keep scrolling until I find the one that I need. Um, so I'm going to do book, author date, and that didn't really work very well. So let's try author date. Nope. <laughs> so that didn't have much luck. Um, so I will have to scroll in order to find this uh, books in Chicago author date. There we go. So it's books with an S, and that's why it wasn't showing up. All right. So. I'm not setting a specific chapter of this book, but we could do that if we wanted to. Um, so for example, if we were citing a section or a chapter, we would cite it like this one, where we have the chapter title in quotations, and then we've got in the book title in italics, if there are editors that are different from the uh, chapter authors, I would put them here. Otherwise, I would just go straight ahead to what pages this chapter or section is on. And then they've got the series, the series number, um, the publisher uh, location, and the publisher 
And then finally, the URL. So this one example has basically everything you would need to know for a book or an ebook. Um, and we're specifically looking at an ebook. So I'm going to go ahead and start double checking this. So I start with the very first thing, which is authors. So the first thing I notice is I need this first author to be last name first. So remember when I changed our Zotero listing from first name, last name to just one thing? So this affected how it comes out in Zotero um, into my exported citation too. So I will have to manually correct this if I make it a single field versus two separate ones. So that's okay though. I'm gonna go ahead, take Jennifer, whoops, and do add that here. And you can see I want another comma after that first name. So Pontius Jennifer comma and first name, last name of our second author. That's good. Next, we've got our year, 2020, and that's formatted correctly. The spaces are there. We have a period after it. Next thing is going to be our title. So I can see this is title case. So I've got capital letters, except for the smaller um, prepositional kind of connector words. And then our colon here, if we have a subtitle, which we do, has no space. So critical skills for environmental professionals, everything looks good for capitalization there. And if you're ever not sure whether something should be capitalized, usually you can Google things like title case, capitalization. Um, and sometimes you can also look inside the Chicago Manual of Style for that too, and just type in capitalization to search for it. And it will tell you the Chicago style specific guidance. But for the most part, um, you can just look up on Google whether um, something needs to be capitalized or not. So you'll notice the first two are from citation styles, but not from Chicago. Um, so that can give you a little bit more help. So sometimes I will search is for capitalized in a title um, and I can find an answer pretty quickly. Um, so our subtitle is also good. We have no space with the colon, putting knowledge into practice. Again, with into the library catalog had a capital I, but the ebook itself had a lowercase I. So I'm gonna go with that um, because I'm looking at the book itself that we are reading. So the series is technically optional. We don't need it, but I mean, in this example, they do put the, the series. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in um, and we'll see it's not uh, italicized or anything. Again, we're not citing a specific chapter. So we're gonna just go ahead and start with our title and then our um, series here. So it's kind of a mishmash of both of these. So they're separated by periods like everything in Chicago style. So Springer textbooks in earth sciences, geography and environment. So basically anybody who reads your paper will be able to tell that you cited a textbook because it's in the series title versus if the series was something like introductory theoretical theory, um, maybe they would know it's a little bit different from a textbook. Next is gonna be our publishing place. So in this example, they did pull out the city and the state um, this one just did the city because it's generally understood that when we're talking about Baltimore, it's Baltimore, Maryland. Chicago does have specific guidance for this. Um, so what I'm going to do is click on Chicago Manual of Style Online, which will take me to author date sample citations or just the general um, thing. Ignore this yellow bar at the top here. When I have the Zotero connector, it has what's called a proxy and it will give you that pop up sometimes. Um, but generally, you can just X out of it and it's not super important. Um, so these are examples and you'll see it says author date. So the first thing you want to make sure you are an author date because there are those two systems. Sometimes if you can't find information about something or the answer to your question in author date, you will find it in notes and bibliography. And you'll just have to remember to make sure that it is author and date first and that the rest is kind of in order. So that's basically one of the only changes between author date and notes and bibliography for at least this level until you get to more advanced citations. The only difference is that the year is in a different spot. So for eBooks in Notes and Bibliography, usually it's after the publisher, um, but here we want it up at the front, up at the top. All right, so we can use these examples um, for books, for example. It tells us where we can look for more examples. So I'm gonna open this in a new tab. Um, so the chapters are organized by numbers. So chapter 15, section 40 or 45. And I'm gonna keep scrolling down until I find eBook because I wanna see if they have extra information about eBook. I don't see anything there are some other information here. So other types of ebooks, name the format. Um, so for example, if you read it on Kindle, you could put Kindle ebook. And I think they do have an example here of what that looks like. So they have Kindle at the end 
um, because we read this book on a Kindle, for example. Um, but in our ebook, we did not. Here's an example of another database, ProQuest eBrary, um, and also some more URLs. Alrighty. So I'm looking for information about the location or the publisher location. And there's two ways to do this. And I'm going to make this page bigger. So I can search for publishing location, or I can go to the table of contents for Chicago Manual of Style or CMOS. It's version 17. Um, I can scroll down until I see author date references. So I'm not interested in the publishing process. I'm not interested in style and usage. This is for people who are writing journal articles or books um, and need to edit it. If you're writing papers, you're usually only interested in source citations and indexes. So author date references, chapter 15. And I can scroll down until maybe I find something about publishing location or information. So usually that's going to be under special cases. So special cases with author names, or for example, if you have a, a website where there's an organization like the United States EPA or UNCG um, is the author, not a specific person, you could click on this one and see how to do that, um, like where the capitalizations are, whether periods come first, how you can do that. There's also things with citation or title of work, excuse me. Um, so here we go, preferring sentence style capitalization versus title style. Um, if you don't have an author, how do you sort them by title or cite them by title? And so I'm looking for books and I'm looking for facts of publication. So information about publication. So there's no date then there's forthcoming. So I don't see anything about the city. I'm gonna go ahead and show you no date of publication because you will see this on some examples. So if there's not a date that this book was published or if I cannot find it. So a lot of websites will have it where there's like a blog post that has no date on it. You would use n.d. Um, you don't put it in italics, even though they use italics up here, um, and it remains lowercase. So they have all that information in the text here, so you do have to read. Um, sometimes you can guess about things. Um, and again, I'm just double checking that I'm an author date to make sure it's in the right order. So you would use it as n.d. for no date. But I'm looking for specifically location. So publication, location, and I'm going to see what pops up. So I know 15. Chapter 15 is author date, um, 14, I believe is notes and bibliography, but we can still use notes and bibliography. We just have to remember to keep that year second. So here I see place of publication city. Um, there's also some other information like, you know, there's no date of publication again, what we do there. So place of publication looks promising. I'm gonna click on it. Um, it says it's usually the one that appears on the title page or sometimes on the copyright page, which is where we found this city. Um, when two or more cities are given, which is not the case here, um, pick the first one. And you'll notice it doesn't really tell us much about states or countries. But if I look in the table of contents here, the very next one tells me when to specify state, province, or country. Um, so it's kind of, you know, luck whether you scroll through. You can also look in the table of contents and, you know, you would be able to see that in table of contents. So this tells us whether to include a state or a country. Um, so, for example, Washington is usually followed by DC without periods. Other major cities, Los Angeles, Baltimore, we really, we generally know where those are. We don't need the city or the state, excuse me, because if you Google those, if you search for them, you know what city or state it is in. Um, for countries, not as easily abbreviated spell out the name. So, the UK is really easy to abbreviate. There are other countries too, like Ontario is a state in Canada, I think a state, I'm not quite sure exactly how to phrase the bigger uh, areas or regions in Canada. So ours is Switzerland. I have no idea how to abbreviate Switzerland, so I'm just going to spell it out. Um, so they don't have any examples of that here, but because it says it in the text that we can just spell it out, um, I could do so. I could also search, you know, see if I can find Switzerland as an example in here. Um, you might not. Um, I don't see any examples. It's mentioned in the text, but I don't see any examples here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put, you know, comma Switzerland um, because it's not easily abbreviated. And if you're never sure, if you're not, or if you're ever not sure about that, ask your instructor what they want um, and whether just having CHAM is sufficient. Because who knows, maybe there's only one cham and it's in Switzerland. All right, so back to our citation thing, our guide, and I'm going to reopen it up in this tab over here and scroll back down to books and author date. So we're going to continue searching. We've got our 
city of publication and our uh, country, I keep saying state, our country of publication. Um, so now we want to double check our publisher should be after a colon. So we've got our city or state. We've got city colon space, the full publisher name. So Springer, it's not Springer Press or Springer eBooks, just Springer um, as we saw in the book. And then we end that with a period. Next, we could do the EBSCO eBooks um, as our library database if we wanted to, or since we have a DOI, I'm going to use this DOI as a link. Um, it's not really important that it is hyperlinked. Um, for the purposes of your instructors and your assignments, you probably will hyperlink it. Um, but for most publications that are like print, um, usually that's the editor's job to make that a hyperlink, um, as long as the URL is correct. And then that URL is followed by a period. So everything in Chicago style is separated or followed by periods, um, with the exception of some things that are commas, like city state. So it looks like this is correct. This is what we need. We've got our series, we've got our location, our URL. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, this is how we would cite this. When we go to cite it in the text, we want to go ahead and use these examples where we have our author, Pontius, and our other last name, McIntosh, no comma, the year, and then this is going to be surrounded by quotations, or sorry, parentheses. Um, and in our uh, uh, citation guide, we don't really have examples of what that looks like actually in the text, but the Chicago Manual of Style does have examples um, of how that is cited in the text. Whoops, not here though. <laughs> um, so it says for more examples, or I can go back to the contents and look specifically for our author date references. And then somewhere in here, there is like a basic format of an in-text citation. And then we can continue clicking on URLs from there to get to an actual example. Or you can look at the sample paper, which is on this uh, citation guide, which actually is probably the best. Um, so if you go to the sample author date paper, you can see a real life example with your title page and everything, um, page number structure, indents for paragraphs, and also something that you can do, so you don't always have to include the year and the, uh, uh, the parenthetical citation, as we call it. If you mention the author's name and the year in the text, you don't have to do the full citation here because you've already cited it with your text. So in this example here, they have the title of the book, which I'm assuming it's a book because it is a italicized title. They have the author's name, and instead of citing it as Dean 2009, they just put 2009 in parentheses because they already mentioned the author's name. They also have the page numbers here. Um, so I've seen some uh, uh, different versions of whether they put the page number at the end versus right after the year. Um, and a lot of that comes down to how many uh, times you cite the same book, whether a specific part um, is cited versus another one isn't. So in this example, this specific page 30 from this book is only cited in this quote here. So they put the page number immediately after the quote instead of after the entire thing. Um, a lot of that is personal preference as you start writing um, or preference of the editors when you are publishing um, later on in the future if you are publishing things. Um, so I want to scroll down really quickly. So here's an example of where they put the page number immediately after the actual citation instead of after the quote. So they didn't put 12 after this quote and then 13 after this quote. They put it right here. Um, and there's more information about why you do that in this example paper. So definitely look through that. So we have collected information about our book. We've corrected it in Zotero. We've exported it from Zotero. And I've also corrected it again using our Chicago style guide and the Chicago manual of style. So all in all, this didn't take a super long amount of time. It did because we were looking through each individual part. But as you do this, it will get quicker. As you remember what parts need to be cited for books and eBooks, this process will get quicker and quicker for you. Um, and also a lot easier, especially since you are doing the first two steps of collecting and correcting as you are reading and collecting resources and beginning to write your paper. And you're doing these last two steps of exporting your citation and correcting that citation at the end during your final draft. So these are split up steps usually. 
All right, and good luck. And again, if you need any help, um, contact the libraries, the university libraries. We have a reference chat, um, which is also on that um, citation style guide. Um, so there is a yellow ask us chat. You can type and say, hello, this is blah, blah, blah. I'm doing an assignment. I need help with the citation. Um, how do I figure out X, Y, Z? Um, and then there is also a go.uncg.edu slash lib liaisons. That's L-I-B, lib liaisons. Um, each academic department has a librarian um, for who is available to answer questions like this um, that can help you build your citation and find resources that you need for your papers. Thanks for watching.